Hello. Uh, oh, music. Um, it's me, Jorbs. It's been a while since I made a video just for YouTube. Let's see if I can remember how it's done. I've been playing some Retropolis on stream lately. It's a very fun game. It's in very early access right now and doesn't have a ton of replayability, so I don't think I'm going to be playing a ton more of it on stream right now. But as more content comes out for it, I may continue to play it, and you might start to see it popping up on YouTube every now and then. I wanted to make a like beginner, introductory, over-explaining type video, just explaining what's going on with the game so far and what I'm thinking about it so far. If you like Slay the Spire, and if you're a YouTube sub of mine, there's a decent chance you do, Retropolis is a game that I think is very likely to be enjoyable to you for 10 or 20 hours right now. Uh, once you've gotten all the unlocks, replayability starts to run out at the moment, but definitely going through the game a few times, getting the unlocks, learning the ropes is a ton of fun. So I do recommend checking this out. It's like a mix between Slay the Spire and a tower defense game and um, like a city builder type game. Bit of an RTS feel to it too, sometimes. There are four different leaders, which looks like a ton of replayability, but they all share the same card pools. So sort of like if you had four different characters just slay the spire, but every single one of them like could get Wraith form and Catalyst at the end of the game. And the game is set up such that you can pretty much do that every single time. So even though there's a variety of different leaders, I think late game in particular gets pretty stale pretty quickly where you're doing um, very similar things most of the time. But I'm going to play the Builder Leader, and we'll talk about exactly what the Builder Leader does more later, and then there are three other leaders that you can check out on your own time. If you're interested, I thought that the Builder Leader would be a good option for showing off the different decision-making that goes on in the game. All right, let's break down what's happening here. I've drawn a hand of five cards, very reminiscent of Slay the Spire. This is a real-time game, it's not turn-based, so in order to get a new hand of cards after I've played the ones from this hand that I want to play, I'm going to have to hit the redraw button. And this will discard the cards remaining in my hand and draw me a new hand. I get a free redraw every 15 seconds. If I want to redraw more often than that, I have to pay gold. Um, it cost me 20 gold on wave 1, 40 gold on wave 2. 200 gold on wave 10 is just 20 times the current wave number is how expensive it is to redraw a hand. So gold is a big limiting factor on how often I can redraw new cards. And that is one of our primary resources. We start with 50 of it. We get five gold every five seconds. This little number here is like our, our taxes basically, which are collected every five seconds. Metropolis pretends to be a wonderful place to live, but maybe it's not actually so great. Um, <laughs> in hand, we also have some cards which will make us gold. Cheese is an example. It costs us 40 gold to play this card. That's the top left number. And then this card will make us 30 gold for each cheese card in our hand, and it counts itself. So when I have three cheese cards like now, this will make us 90 gold. It costs 40, so we net 50 from it. So that's one of our resources. Another big resource, I'm pausing because it's real time, obviously. So another big resource is our Radisons, which is like our population, basically. This is a guard unit. So this is a military unit. If I play this, I get a guard in my town and the card stays in my deck. So it's not like I only get one card, one guard per card. Um, I could have 100 guards just from one card as long as I drew the card 100 times and played it every time. And it costs me one population to put down a guard. So one thing that Radisons do is they limit how much of a standing army that you can have. So let's play this hand. So I want to play two cheeses because those are positive and I don't need to deploy any military yet. And let's redraw and look at our next hand. We've got a house here. The house is a building. You can think about this sort of like powers in Slay the Spire. When I place this in my town, it takes up space forever. Um, so you only have enough space for a certain number of buildings, but it's fairly easy to uh, expand. So you can keep expanding for more and more space to play more and more buildings. And we're the building-based leader, so our strategy is going to probably have quite a lot of buildings in it. 
And once this is built, which takes just a couple of seconds maybe, we get another four reticens, so we would be up to nine total reticens available, and we get plus one tax every five seconds. So that's cool. We also have a potter, which is a different type of economy card. This one gives us 10 gold per card in hand when we play it, costs 17, so it would give us 50 gold and cost 17 for net plus 33. And grain, which is another quite interesting type of economy card. This is an economy card, and this one has labor on it. There are actually a variety of effects that can be achieved with labor, but labor is a different way to use ratizens, basically. So you can use ratizens to make military units, or if I play grain, it costs me five gold, and for the next 50 seconds, it uses two of my ratizens, and then at the end of the 50 seconds, I get 60 gold for a net of plus 55. So we want to play this hand. We want to play the potter first. We want to get the grain deployed. We can play a cheese profitably, and we want to play a house. And then I'm going to redraw. At this stage in the game, I think I can redraw profitably up until when redraws start costing 80. So I'm making a lot of money by redrawing when they only cost 20, just because the cards in my deck have a lot of gold attached to them. All right. This little indicator here on the left says that there's a wave coming from the left. We've got a left side to the town and a right side to the town, and both can be attacked. And I have exactly one food left with which to deploy some guards, and these guards will do a perfectly fine job of defending the town. And then uh, another thing that's going on is I have a leader ability. All four of the leaders have a special ability. My one is Blueprint. I can discard a random card for every level of the leader ability I have. So right now, just one from my hand, and I get a random building card. And it's ephemeral, which means that if I discard it or whatever, it will just go away forever. So I get one chance to play it if I want to. And if I don't want to, it's just gone. So now that I have 236 gold, I should have enough money to um, play any of the buildings that I get. That's why I didn't use this ability yet, because I wanted to make sure that I actually had enough gold to play them. And I can discard a card, and we got a watchtower. This is a defensive structure, fires an arrow that deals five damage to the enemy every one second. The game's uh, by Korean devs, and some of the English localization's a little bit off, but I think it's fairly clear what that means. Um, if you look at this militia, the breakdown of the card in terms of combat stats is very simple. It deals three damage with every attack. It has 16 hit points. And so you can compare that to the watchtower, which deals five damage with every attack every second and see that it's a decent amount of damage for this stage in the game. I'm not going to play the watchtower. The problem is that it's a stationary building and I'm going to expand past where my walls are right now uh, very quickly, so it's just going to be sort of in the way of my other buildings if I play it. So basically we missed out on getting something worthwhile with that use of our hero ability, unfortunately. I'm just playing my economy cards and re-rolling since the re-rolls are still cheap enough that I'm making money doing that. And we've got a wave coming in couple of enemies. Our guards are going to have no trouble dealing with those though. It's a very enjoyable gameplay pattern, just like spamming your reroll, working out which order you want to play the cards in your hand in, if there are any that you don't want to play, stuff like that. Right. We're through the wave. You may have seen there that our wall has HP and we're down to 176 out of 200. There is like one card in the game that can get that HP back, but what's more likely is we're just going to expand walls past it, and the walls that we build past it will have full HP, so that's fine. It won't end up mattering that much that this wall is damaged. Uh, at the end of every wave, we get a treasure chest, assuming that we kill it. And our treasure chests have three different options in them. I believe that... At the start of the game, there are five different options we could potentially be offered, and then as you start fighting like elite waves and boss waves, you get bigger chests with more exciting rewards. But for right now, in this chest, we're being offered a card reward, or some gold, or another house card. The house is the building that we got at the start of the game that gave us four radisons. I think gold is clearly not as good as the other two options here. 
I think the difference between getting a card here and building a house is really interesting. And as I've played the game more, I've started to have more and more developed opinions about when it's important to get cards and when it's important to get houses. The game breaks down pretty nicely into three acts, uh, up to wave 10, then up to wave 20, then up to wave 30 would be act one, two, and three. And one of the things that this game does is it gates the late game cards by how far you are into the game. You start seeing more and more rare cards more and more frequently as time progresses. And also, the more and more rare cards tend to be more important for winning late game and not necessarily that good for like Act 2. Um, one example would be Longbows are very, very, very good units for Act 3, but in Act 2, a lot of enemies have um, resistance or immunity to ranged attacks or to ranged attacks that come from above them, I should say, which is what Longbows do. And so... It ends up being the case that you can generally win Act 1 just with your starter deck almost, and I don't think that card rewards in Act 1 are that important. I tend to go with Houses because that gives me a larger standing military and gets me through Act 1. In Act 2, you tend to need some pretty significant incremental advantages, like stronger units or some sort of cards which deal some damage to waves. And then in Act 3, you tend to try to put together some strong combination of cards, which... Um, gets you to a point where you're scaling in a way that's like multiplicative and really gross and unfair and, and kills all the enemies. But in Act 1, I tend to take Houses because I can't get the cards which are good for mid-game yet really from card rewards anyway, and Houses are giving me more units right now. So that's where I'm at on that at the moment, but it's certainly subject to change. I think the game's quite complicated. And I'm not at a 100% win rate or anything, so there's definitely room to change what I'm doing a little bit. Oh my god, well we won already. Wow. <laughs> so what just happened is at the end of wave one, this happens every time you get a merchant visit. And we can buy zero cards or eight cards or anywhere in between here. And the thing is... There are quite a few ways to run mid-game economies, which are really interesting. And I guess mining is one of the ways. I'm not sure that mining is the most interesting of the ways. This is a card which, when we buy it, it just makes two gold every time we play it and actually costs 12 gold, so that's awful. But every time that we play it, it's like a rampage or a claw where... Um, it's like a claw, I guess, where all of the minings in your deck give more gold now. So because every wave, the cost of a redraw goes up by 20, if you're playing five minings per wave, you're keeping pace with the cost of redraws going up, as long as you play one mining every redraw. And um, if you can do more than that, which we definitely can at the moment, you can get to a point where mining is just letting you play cards nonstop. So I'm going to buy both of these. I'm going to be playing cards nonstop for this entire game. I'm going to buy a barn seems really 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 good in combination with these minings because I'm going to be re-rolling my hand all the time and I discard my hand when I re-roll it. So that's going to make us a ton of money I think. I'm going to buy a defensive wall to expand a little bit and I'm going to buy a shield rat. This is pretty early to be buying a shield rat I think but I think that our deck is so strong that we can already do that and the shield rat should be strong for us in mid game. Uh, it's a just a strong melee unit that will survive a lot of the waves as they get tougher and tougher. 48 HP is very significant, especially on a unit that only costs one population. And the defensive ability where we block all damage received every third hit does matter. The only thing left is like, maybe I should buy Gather as well. If this card is discarded from your hand, you get plus one card in the next hand is the thing with Gather. So it doesn't do that much, but it lets us get an extra 8 gold when we discard it with Barn. It lets us get bigger hands for Potter, so Potter will make an extra 10 gold because it'll be an extra card in our hand. Uh, the Cheese, we're more likely to draw Cheese together if we have a 6 card hand, although less likely to if we have a Gather in our deck, if we're like drawing Gather instead of Cheese sometimes. 
So this card's okay. A cost that's sort of hidden with buying Gather here is that it takes time to draw it and to discard it. And this is a game where you are limited on time. Even if we can theoretically gain gold every time we reroll our cards, that doesn't mean that we have infinite gold because we don't have enough time to do that infinite time. Uh, also, gold's capped at 99,999, so we wouldn't get infinite anyway, but we probably have enough gold from our minings that we can reroll as often as we can press the button, as long as we play the cards in our hand. And because of that, I think that buying gather is probably not great, because it just adds another card to our reroll cycle and um, makes it take a little bit more time for us to get to the cards that we want more. So I'm going to go with no on that. All right, let's deploy our barn. Let's get a defensive wall going out to the right so we're expanding. Let's already put a shield rat in front of this wall. Why not? Okay, I think this is our first event, yeah? Tree hideout. So we get lots of events in this game. The events actually... Sometimes your choice for an event will lead to a different event happening later. So you get a clear indication of what your choices can do now, but you don't necessarily know like maybe one choice will lead to a different thing happening later, which could be important. Uh, and I guess you have to go look on wiki or something to find that out, which is something I haven't done yet. I'm not sure if the wiki's there. Excuse me, I'm not sure if the, the wiki exists to be able to do that. I would say that two house cards for the extra population is very good early game. I think getting extra population going so you have a large enough standing army to survive mid game is really important right now. Advisors are like relics in Slay the Spire, sort of, but there's a lot of randomness to how good they are. Sometimes they won't be good at all, and this is such a powerful reward at the moment that I think we want that. The game's early access, like I said, it doesn't have that much content in it yet, so you will get the same events over and over again, like every single playthrough. So I'm starting to get to the point where, like, yeah, I know that that event's coming and know exactly what I want to do with it. Alright, a treasure chest. So I could take another house, um, just keep that uh, population increasing. A nice thing about population is that since we're spamming mining all the time, we're drawing grain very often, and having more population will make sure that we can play grain every time we draw it, and we're not going to run out of labor for that. So definitely grabbing a house is appealing. I think that deleting a card is pretty good here too. We could get rid of our Militia card, for example. It's a melee unit that's just quite a lot worse than our Shield Rats are. And uh, I don't think Militia does anything better than Shield Rats, actually. I guess you get more damage per gold out of Militia, but that's not a thing that we need to worry about very much with our melee units. And we don't even... it's not even... <laughs> It's not even true in a particularly impressive way. It's just that shield rats don't deal that much damage and militia deal the same amount of damage but cost less, so. I think deleting the militia is pretty reasonable. That would let us play our minings more often. The only question is, do we need to do that to play our minings often enough to spam reroll for the rest of the game? I'm not sure that we do. And then card reward, card reward's fine. I think I'm gonna go ahead and grab the house right now. Just keep our, keep our forces strengthening. Put down a shield rat on the other wall. Maybe play shield rat every time we draw it for a little while. Just want to make sure that I don't play so much stuff that I don't have enough gold to keep rolling for mining. It's the only concern. I'm not going to play shield rat here because I have a blueprint to use and I want to spend the gold on a structure instead. Another house is awesome. Gets us some more population. We got another wave coming from the left. We're still only at wave three, so everything's pretty chill. It's a very, very enjoyable little um, 
cycle of drawing the next hand and working out which cards in it you want to play and where do you want to play them and everything. Looks like our economy is starting to take off. Mining's already at 50 gold. Yeah, we're going to be very rich in this game for sure. A collapsed settlement. So this is like your whale bonus in this game. If your last settlement lasted past wave 10, you um, get an extra bonus. And if it didn't, you don't get anything. Unfortunately, it looks like my last settlement... That's weird. I'm pretty sure my last settlement lasted longer than wave 10. Maybe I was like starting this video and didn't like how I intro it and started again. No, I didn't do that. That's weird. I thought that my... I thought my last settlement lasted longer than wave 10, but I must be wrong. So we don't get any bonus from that, unfortunately. In this treasure chest, we have the get card that we've been passing on just because other stuff seems a little bit stronger and our basic deck seems strong enough to win act one for right now. Honestly, we can probably do pretty well in act two with this deck too. We have delete a card, which we've talked about already. It would be nice to remove the cards that aren't mining and our economy cards, because uh, mining seems like the one that's important for making us lots of gold here. But I think I'm going to take the leader level up. This is the first time it's been offered. A little micro thing to note is that when you get offered a leader level up, it gives you, um, it gives you a fresh cooldown on the ability, so you can use it immediately. So you want to, if your leader ability is available, you probably want to use it right before you pick up the chest, just in case you're getting the leader level up, if you're in a situation where you would take it. This makes it so we get two buildings instead of one when we use our ability. So let's check these out. We've got another barn. We've got a watchtower. I'm a little bit short on space, and I feel like I'm very rich. And the builder has this special thing where I can place a building on top of a building of the same sort and just upgrade the building and get a level 2 one. Level 2 buildings tend to have somewhere between 1.5 times and 2 times the effect of a level 1 building. So a lot of the time you want 2 level 1 buildings instead of 1 level 2 building because the 2 level 1 buildings will actually give you more effect. But a level 2 building uses less space. I feel like we don't have that much space, and I feel like the output from the barn isn't that important at the moment. I'm just going to build a level 2 barn, and I don't think we need a watchtower for any reason. We're going to keep expanding past these borders, and our military is plenty strong to defend our walls without help from stationary defenses at the moment. When we expand our walls, we can just send our military walking forward to the next wall. That'll be a bit better. Maybe I'll have to do another run where I don't get two minings right at the start, and we can talk more about the mid-game economy, because I, uh, I think the mid-game economy is just going to be spamming mining over and over again, which is not going to be super complicated. It's up to 78 gold per play already here. There are definitely much more interesting and complicated things that can happen in the mid-game economy. So we have to think about how do we lose the run from here. Just because we have lots of money does not mean that we win at all. To survive Act 2, we're going to have to deal with some pretty difficult to kill waves, and a lot of them are going to have defenses against our guards, because our guards use arcing projectiles and a lot of the waves in act two have shields above their heads so those units are just not useful so we're probably want wanting to have some sort of damage dealers that don't get affected by the shields some sort of strong melee unit that's more damage focused than the shield rats are some sort of spell maybe that deals a lot of damage basically we're going to need to look at more cards probably in order to beat act two so 100 gold doesn't let me look at more cards. Removing a card doesn't let me look at more cards, but plus one leader level uh, definitely lets me look at more buildings, and buildings can definitely get me cards. You'll see as the run goes on that buildings can do some very, very, very strong things in this game. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to lose half my gold, which doesn't matter at all. I think the minings will uh, take care of that, no problem. And from this treasure chest reward, I think I'm just going to take another house. To keep the population going. My main concern here is dying in mid-game because I'm not able to get a strong enough army to deal with the mid-game waves. I think that with our um, 
hero ability, we'll be able to find ways to scale into late game almost all of the time. So grabbing a house seems like the right thing to do to me. Just working on the defenses on the walls a little bit more. Another merchant coming into town here. Be able to take another look at some cards. I believe that the merchants come at the same times every single run. So it isn't random when they're going to show up. You can actually know exactly which waves they show up on if you've played the game enough. All right, cool. I was talking about how I might need some strong melee-based damage dealing to survive Act 2 when we've got a Berserker being offered to us right here. So that's that done. Uh, yep. <laughs> I'm going to grab the Berserker. I'm going to grab a defensive wall and a house just to keep on expanding. These other military units do not seem necessary to me. Like, buying a militia here just isn't very useful at all because we are limited on our population. We can only put another three military units down unless I get more population from houses. So we want to use our population on good military units, and, like, we can draw this Berserker card off enough to just play a bunch of Berserkers. Um, similar with guards. Slingers are, like, very similar to guards, but have a bit more range and stun the enemy and have a bit more damage. They're like um, they're like an upgraded version of guards who do something quite similar to guards overall. I don't think we need to buy slingers over guards at the moment. I don't think our strategy is going to revolve much around either guards or slingers here. I think let's have shield throughout some berserkers for a while, and then we'll try to shift into something else for late game. I don't believe it's worth it to buy the random card. There is a random card in every single merchant in this game, and you can buy it. The problem here is that cluttering our deck and making it harder to draw and play mining seems like not a very good thing to be doing. We're definitely enjoying getting to playing mining at the moment. All right, let's push out to the left. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab another house, keep the population building. We've got an event here. Back to basics. These events actually are random, so I didn't know what this was going to be when I clicked on that little scroll. You can get a random economy card or a random building card. Economy cards are, I believe, exclusively cards which give you gold. Um, let's see. I can think of one which gives you more card draw sometimes. But for the most part, they are cards which give us more gold, and we don't really need that because mining is taking care of us. We, uh, we have a mining-based economy, and we will for the rest of the game. So I'm going to take a random building card. I don't think... It's possible we get a building card that we don't really want, but I think we take it anyway. We get another house that's awesome. I don't think it's likely enough that we get a building card that we don't want for us to not take that. Oops, I should have played Potter before I played the houses. It would have given me a little bit more gold. Uh, rather than playing the cheese, I'm going to use my hero ability here. It's level 3 now, so I get 3 buildings. One more house. There's an aid station? Aid station gives us sustain, and since we're going to be melee unit based it looks like for all of act two having sustain on those melee units i think will be very valuable let's place the aid station i'm still not going to put a watchtower down i'm still planning to expand quite a lot i am the builder leader so i expect to get a lot of buildings uh let's see seven guards seven guards for a little while guards will be nice and then they're gonna start dying to splash damage from things this is an elite wave, so if we did not have melee units set to go, this would have actually jumped over our wall, just eaten our ranged units, and possibly killed us by itself. And the elite waves are actually, like, the waves aren't always the same, which is nice. There are a variety of possible elites, there are a variety of possible bosses. I think there are, like, two of each per act or something right now, so not quite as much variety as in Slay the Spire, but it's it's definitely coming along. Definitely a little bit of it going on. 
For an elite wave, we get a more exciting treasure chest. Our options are expansion territory, gives us two houses and a defensive wall card. We can keep pushing out. Legendary card, choose one of three legendary cards. I think that legendary cards are very good, but they're not that great until Act 3 a lot of the time. So I'm probably going to pass on that right now. Uh, some of the buildings are very good. Some of the skills are like like Wraith Form levels of Broken. The thing about Wraith Form is it doesn't really do anything at the moment, though. We could also card upgrade. I think card upgrading Berserkers just guarantees that we're set until the end of Act 2, and then we can worry about other things later. I'm going to take the card upgrade on Berserkers. I'll just spam Berserkers a little bit here. Gives them over 50% more damage, actually. That's pretty significant. I'm going to play Berserkers every time I draw them, and we're going to have a, a very, very, very Berserker-based military here. I'm not going to bother playing other things right now. My Berserkers are just much stronger than my other units. Okay, coming from the left side again. And keep in mind that I don't necessarily have enough population or gold to be playing all of my military cards. Six Berserkers on that wall. Let's make six over on this wall too. I'm using Q and E to jump from the left side of my base to the right side and back again, in case you're playing and wondering what that hotkey is. Using space to redraw. As we get later into the game, there's more and more like clarity on exactly what you want to do with every hand, and if you're in a situation where you can redraw a lot, you can get to a point where you're playing through the hands very quickly and understanding exactly what's going on pretty well. I'm going to take level 4 leader ability. Let's do it. It's not actually written anywhere, but the builder leader ability gives you more and more rare buildings as you level it up, so now that it's level 4, we should start seeing some pretty sweet rare stuff. use it straight away. Okay, we can take another level 2 barn. I sort of missed here. We've got barn, which gives us gold, but we have a trillion gold anyway, so I'm not sure that I want to build that at all. We have a tannery, which gives us bounty. Bounty is how much gold you get when you kill enemies, so that's also just more gold. We have a mine. Every 60 seconds we draw a selected card from the card tomb, which is the discard pile. Um which doesn't seem like it does anything when we're redrawing so fast anyway. We can just redraw to pick up cards. And a problem with this is that like it has an animation and it takes a while for the card to get into our hand. So um, it's sort of like faster to just redraw next hand and you don't just get the card you were looking for from the discard pile, but also get a bunch of other cards. I'm actually just going to discard all of these. Um, don't need those. Got an aid station available, so I think at the end of this wave I'll use that. It looks like all of my berserkers here are pretty healthy. I've got another merchant. Interesting. Well, I'm going to buy two defensive walls and keep on pushing out. I'm going to buy a market 100%. I would love a market. This is a market's like your own merchant that visits every two minutes. You're only allowed to play, only allowed to buy one card from the market instead of up to eight, though. So uh, sometimes you won't get as much value out of it. I could go for repair. There's um, There are three skills of which if you have two of them, your walls become very, very, very strong. And repair is one of those three. Repair is a common, though. So it should be quite possible to see it later in the game. I'm going to buy it, I think. 
And then the other two, one of them makes it so that your walls only take one damage every time they're hit. That's the thing I was talking about, the sort of like wraith form. So if you have that plus repair, then all of a sudden, like the enemies can hit your walls forever, but you're just going to repair them and they're not really going to take damage. And there's one that gives your walls increased max HP every time you play it, and you can stack it indefinitely. So you can get to like a 3,000 HP wall, and then when you repair it, that's a 1,000 health yield. So that will help you to survive waves for a very long time too. Repair doesn't do very much at the moment because I have berserkers, so my walls aren't actually taking damage. Oh, whoops, I can't play those because there are waves coming. I'll wait until the waves die. Late game though, my melee units are probably not going to be strong enough to hold off waves by themselves. So I think late game I will benefit from having the possibility of building very strong walls. This is level 5 already on the... wow, that seems really strong. Alright, we'll go for level 5 leader ability. Uh, Monastery is a good one. This is an active where every two minutes we can remove a card from our deck, so that can be used to get rid of the like early game economy cards that we're not really benefiting from anymore. Definitely throw that down. Watermill, every 60 seconds we get a work card, and the work card makes it so a building of our choice um, works at double speed, so like our monastery would um, let us remove cards more often, for example. I think the watermill mostly just takes up space and isn't necessary here. It takes time for me to activate it and play it on the monastery, and that just doesn't really seem worth it. It's probably fine to grab it, but I don't think it's necessary. Farm is a mediocre way of getting gold. It's not very strong at the best of times, and especially now where we have a different way of getting gold that's better, it seems just not great. Fishery gives us a look at two random cards every two minutes, although they're ephemeral, so we can't keep them in our deck. We could just use them once. Don't think that's necessary for much reason. The cost of placing these is mostly the space in the base, and I think I'm going to try to use the space in the base for stuff that's more useful. And a watchtower. I think we're still expanding. I think we still... Well, also, we just don't really need a watchtower because we're incredibly, incredibly strong um, with our military at the moment. Our berserkers don't need no stinking watchtower. Let's use the aid station. Do a mid-combat heal there. See how our guards are all dying there? They're getting hit by the ranged units. That's just gonna happen. Your guards don't stick around forever unless you invest quite a lot in making them tankier somehow. And we haven't really been offered any way of doing that. So I don't know if it's because of the options I choose earlier or if this just always happens, but on wave nine, I basically always get this event and I basically always take plus two attack for all of my military units currently deployed especially when i have more base level units but even here where i have berserkers who are pretty strong getting the plus two attack uh, we've got an aid tent so our units are going to survive for a while it's going to do a lot to help us through act two we should be about to see a boss wave here Deleting a card. Deleting cards fine, but we have a monastery that's going to slowly delete cards for us. We don't need gold for any reason, so I'm just going to take another house. The big concerns for me right now are... I have to make sure that I play enough stuff to actually survive Act 2. I can't like get greedy and stop playing military units because Act 2 is pretty scary. The game's hard. Uh, even though I have a strong start here, it's possible to lose. The other thing is I need to make sure that I'm seeing lots of, of opportunities to put something broken together for late game. If I don't get something broken in late game, I could still lose in late game just because the waves late game get very, very, very strong. Oh, did we already kill a boss? 
I'm confused. Is there no boss at the end of Act 1? Maybe there's no boss at the end of Act 1. Maybe I'm a crazy person. Now that we're at wave 10, though, um, now when we look at cards, we have much higher chance of seeing more exciting cards, basically. And so I think I'm going to start looking at cards here, overtaking houses. And we'll keep on getting some houses from our uh, hero ability as well. We should um, should be able to keep our... People upgrading or whatever. Population booming. Call to Arms is not terrible at all. Uh, this would just make a lot of militia for us all at once. So if we fell behind on one of the walls, this would be a nice way to stem the bleeding for a bit. I don't think it's necessary here because we have a really nice standing army of berserkers. Works okay for the next 15 seconds accelerate production time of selected building by two times. So every time I play that on a monastery, for example, it's like getting, what, an eighth? An eighth of a card removed, I believe, for 21 gold. So sort of slow, um, it's not terrible. I'm not going to add it to my deck. I don't think it's necessary here. I think it just gets in the way more than... Like, the effect is pretty minimal. And there's something to be said for keeping clutter out of your deck. So that you can draw the cards that really matter. Alright, we're looking at five more buildings. Tavern's very strong. Tavern is one of the buildings that provides multiplicative scaling as a building. Every 120 seconds we can duplicate a card, so if we get, say, a different building card that we'd really like a lot of copies of, well, every two minutes now we can make another copy of it. So that's pretty cool. Definitely throw down a tavern. Let's put it here. Factory is interesting. Minus four second redraw cooldown. That gives me free redraws more often. The thing is my redraws are sort of free already because I draw and play mining, right? So we probably don't want to play a factory. We can just discard that. We definitely play a defensive wall. Why not? Lab is great. Every two minutes we can look at some skill cards and we can skip or we can take one of the two skill cards it offers us. I've talked already about how um, coupling my repair with another skill card that helped to make my walls strong would give me very, very strong walls. So this would help me perhaps put that together. And I don't need a watchtower still. Hmm. So I could go with a third mining, but it doesn't seem necessary. It seems like I'm already good there. I think the options here that matter a lot are market or defensive wall, and I'm just going to go market. That's fine. Um, you can usually get a defensive wall every time you go to a market. Sometimes you can get two. So we can just buy defensive walls when we run out of space for buildings, pretty much. And a market is going to increase our chances of getting the late game broken combos that we need. Hmm. We've expanded to a point where we've triggered this event. This event triggers when you expand to your fourth wall. I think in either direction. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, obviously all of these options are pretty bad, but in this situation we can just lose all gold and we're actually going to be fine. Our taxes are going to tick. We're going to play Potter. And we're going to uh, get back on track with our minings pretty quickly here. A merchant has arrived. Merchant, I don't have any gold right now. Can you hold on for a second? You can see how long the merchant's going to stay there if it's not on screen. But if it's on screen, there's actually no way that I know of to tell how long it's going to stay. A little bit weird. Alright, let's click on it and see what it's got. I would say out of these, taking a crossbow route wouldn't be completely unreasonable. It's like a decent range unit, but I don't think it's necessary with our berserkers. I'm just taking a defensive wall in a house seems fine. Keep on expanding, keep on strengthening. Our monastery is available. Let's start removing copies of cheese. I don't think we're playing these very often. They're just sort of in the way. Is that the Act 1 boss? I'm confused. 
The Act 2 boss is very clear. It's like, oh yeah, this is a boss fight. Maybe the Act 1 boss is a little bit more uh, confusing. Maybe it doesn't actually exist. Who could say for sure? So we're a little bit late on gold at the moment. Um, taking two house cards and a defensive wall card does cost a bunch of gold to deploy them. They're also nice to have though. 25% military card attack. That seems like a really good advisor, doesn't it? And then a card upgrade. I can't think of anything in particular that would be incredible to upgrade in our deck at the moment. Let's take a let's take 25% military attack. So this is an advisor. It's sort of comparable to a relic in Slay the Spire. We have that forever. It seems like 25% is a pretty big number. This is, <laughs> this is my educated guess. Um Seems like that will probably help us quite a bit over the course of the run. Just a little bit stuck on gold right now because our uh, little nest egg got stolen by the event. But our minings give us so much that, there we go, we're back in business now, I think. I do have my ability ready. I'm gonna wait until I don't have a mining in my hand to use it, I think. And at this point, let's see, removing a card's probably fine. I think looking at cards is fine too. I'm not sure which is better overall. Um, probably looking at cards. I think we just skip all of these though. Yeah, oh well. We're in a situation where there are like a couple of really important cards that would help us a lot, and then there are a lot of cards that don't really do very much. Okay, we've got another market, another tavern. A warehouse is interesting. The warehouse reduces production time of adjacent buildings by 30%. So you get eight tiles in each segment of wall. And a lot of the production buildings that matter take three tiles. So you can go three tile on one side, three tile on the other side, and a warehouse between, which is what I'm doing here with the monastery. Tavern is great. Another market's great. I don't think I need a lumber mill. I didn't already place a level one one, did I? I do have a level one aid station. I can go to level two on that. That's cool. Lumber mill just makes us a little bit of gold. Um, not a very big deal, I wouldn't say. So these enemies, they have their like tablets or whatever those are above their heads. Those actually block projectiles. Um, if a projectile hits one of those, it deals no damage to the enemy. And so having a purely ranged unit based military in Act 2 specifically, because Act 2 is the only place where enemies have stuff like this, um, doesn't really work. You really need melee units. So good thing that we have berserkers, right? Check out this lab. I don't think there's any reason to grab any of these skill cards. Let's check out the market. I could grab another defensive wall. I could grab another monastery, but I don't think we need another monastery for much reason. I guess I could upgrade the monastery I have already. Sure, let's upgrade the monastery that we have already. I don't really need another defensive wall right now. There's plenty of space at the moment. I have a tavern available too. I'm going to wait on the tavern until I have a card that I really want to duplicate though. The tavern's the building which duplicates a card that we have. I could grab a house and duplicate the house right now if I wanted a little bit more population. That's uh, that's an idea that's certainly not unreasonable. I've got a market available. I can look for something to duplicate there. I've got an event available. I don't know what that'll be. Um... Let's take a house and keep on spamming berserkers. Our market has a tax office. Plus one tax for every Radisson, so this would be an extra almost 15 gold every five seconds, which is certainly a significant amount of gold. 
Uh, we do have mining though, so <laughs> I keep on coming back to this mining thing, right? Where the fact that we have these minings makes a lot of the cards not that relevant at the moment. Armored Knight's strong. It costs two population, unfortunately. Maybe Shield Rats are just as good as Armored Knights anyway. In terms of like being another military unit to uh, stick in with our Berserkers and help defend them. We're going to want some sort of ranged solution for Act 3. In Act 3, our melee units are going to start not being quite as exciting. Anyway, I think this ends up being Defensive Wall or Random Card, actually, now that we have a Monastery ticking. And if the Random Card's bad, we can just get rid of it. Or maybe Tax Office, if we're not sure about our income. Could be good. Let's go tax office since we can always get a defensive wall. That's the event. Oh, nice. Fragile walls. A soldier rat covered in wounds approaches you. Um, so here you go. I can now upgrade my walls with reinforce and then I can repair them when they're taking a bunch of damage, and our walls will last a very long time at this point. So I would like to push out far enough in one direction to be ready to like place a permanent wall out there. Because if I'm going to spend a lot of time reinforcing a wall, I don't really want to expand past it. 15 there. I'm out of money. Do I need to duplicate a mining, maybe? I'm gonna duplicate a mining. Maybe it wasn't necessary, but right now I can't reroll. And it feels like I have like lots of markets to spend money in, lots of buildings to spend money in with my hero power, stuff like that. Let's use the aid station. And these units look like they didn't have the most health. Keep removing the cheeses. Um, do I want plus five bounty, so five more gold per kill and lose half my gold, or will I like plus two attack for all military units currently deployed? Yes, I think so. This seems like a mostly irrelevant change to how our gold works, and this seems like our units are stronger for the end of Act 2. The end of Act 2 is scary. I like making our units stronger there. Take another defensive wall. Experiments is a really interesting card. For the next 20 seconds plus 40 gold for each skill card used. You can't stack that, so you can only have one of them working. Also worth pointing out that economy cards are not skill cards. Skill cards are the blue ones, like reinforce and repair are the skill cards that we have right now. I don't think anything else here matters. Take a look at this. Um, let's grab... Let's grab another card, because at this point I want some sort of ranged way of dealing damage, since I can make um, mostly invincible walls, right? I want some sort of ranged way of dealing damage out of the cards that I'm getting before Act 3, ideally. I look at five buildings again. A smithy every 120 seconds. Upgrade a card. That seems great. Just upgrade some of the cards that we're playing. No reason not to do that. Don't think I need a barn. Don't think I need a farm or a granary. Granaries do nothing except make farms a little bit better, but we're not using farms here. Don't need a tannery. All of that's just mostly irrelevant gold. Oof. Bloods have hit us. We can take five flood cards, though. They just cost us 75 gold to get rid of. So, not the best, but we have a strong enough economy to handle that. Oh, there are our longbow rats. So now we have longbow rats. We have reinforce. We have re pair. We've got a monastery to remove the other stuff. I think we have a winning combination of cards now. We just need to 
make sure that we've um, played them in a way that's strong enough. We just need to get some longbows out. The tricky thing about longbows is that they can shoot from back here. And so where we had this problem with the guards dying to splash damage, our longbows are not going to be dying to splash damage. I think our leader ability is already at 5. That's... We can't really get a hand of six cards at the moment. There are lots of ways that you could get six cards in your hand, but we don't have a single one of them. So we can't get six buildings out of our leader ability. I think I'm just going to take a card remove. Um, start thinning the deck down a little bit faster. If we can play reinforce more often, that seems like it makes it worth it to be doing this. I don't see much reason to have... Uh, actually, let's get rid of grain since it takes labor. And we can keep Potter for a little bit longer. Grab another tavern or a defensive wall. Go with a defensive wall. Keep on pushing out. Grab more space. Actually, I'm going to take two defensive walls. We can get to the edge of the map and then make our wall at the edge of the map really, really, really tanky. That'll give us a ton of space to put buildings to help with scaling in to help make our longbows stronger and stronger. I don't see much here that I want. I could just take another defensive wall. I could upgrade my smithy. I'll take another defensive wall. Our smithy is going to get the cards that we care about upgraded. Not too long. These skills don't seem that great. So at this point, it's lots and lots of looking at cards and deciding if there's a sensible way to use them or if we don't need them. Um, push you forward, reinforce that maybe, I need to push you all forward. This is an elite wave too, awkward time to not have any troops on my walls. It'll be fine once the berserkers actually get there though. a tavern ready, but I don't think I have anything to duplicate at the moment. I'm going to upgrade a card. Um, that's fine, though. We've got an, a smithy, right? Upgrading our cards for us. And we're in a situation where we like only care about four cards for late game, so not a problem. I think we take more expansion territory. Just make our scaling stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. Let's actually duplicate a wall again. We will eventually use all of this territory. We're not using it all right now, but we're going to get to a point where we will. I don't see much reason why I care about militia. Grab another defensive wall? Sure, why not? Yep, that's all I want here. So we just reached the end of the possible territory to the right. I'm going to upgrade this wall. I am the builder, so I can place the same version of a building on top of a building and get a level 2 version of the building. And I'm going to start reinforcing that wall and pushing out to the left now, and we will, we will control a lot of territory. We will control all of the territory. Um, sensible upgrades here. I would say Longbow Rat's a pretty sensible upgrade. The Longbow Rat remembers what it was when you played it, so if I upgrade it now and then play them, they'll be stronger. If I play them now and then upgrade it later, they won't be strong in any way. And our Longbow Rats probably aren't going to die at any point in this run, so I think playing stronger Longbow Rats makes sense. Give me, give me, give me. 
Certainly makes sense to me. Oops. I was trying to click on the chest and somehow I clicked there. Like my brain didn't quite understand what was going on there. And did a thing. Uh, a house is okay. Just using a card is okay. We've got a library here, which is really cool. University is pretty interesting too, actually. Yeah, I'll go with a house. I'm just like a little bit concerned that one of the ways I might lose could be to not get enough longbows. So the library gives us an extra card when we redraw it. Can I upgrade this? Or whenever we redraw, we get an extra card rather. Where's my smithy? No, it's a long way away. I can't duplicate it either, can I? 17 seconds. I think it's worth duplicating this, so we'll wait. Uh, university gives me minus five second leader ability cooldown every time we lose, use a skill card, so that could get us a lot more buildings really fast. I think I'm okay with that. Yeah, and I'm going to wait for this tavern so I can duplicate a library so I can get a level two library. And level two library will give us an extra two cards every time we redraw, which will be even stronger. Don't need guards anymore. Come on, tavern. Anything to buy here? Maybe just another wall. Keep going. Keep pushing out. All of a sudden I have seven cards in my hand. When you hover a card, it slows the game down, but like not all the way. We should be fine over here, right? Oh, there like are a lot of them. Um, interesting. We're just barely okay, I think. Definitely lost some Berserkers there, though. That would have been really awkward if our Berserkers all died. Maybe I need more Berserkers deployed. Because those people had defenses against arrows from our Longbowmen. They were holding things above their heads, which would have blocked the arrows. Yeah, so if all of my Berserkers died there, it would have been, like, pretty difficult. Probably not impossible, but possibly fairly difficult to deal with everything. That event didn't really do much. It's a whatever event. We took like minus four tax. Doesn't really matter. How do I pause the recording? Get up. Gotta run to the bathroom. I have no idea how I pause the recording. Can I not pause a recording? Maybe I actually can't pause a recording on this version of OBS. All right, I'm gonna run to the bathroom now. I'll be right back. I'll play you some stream highlights while I'm gone. How about that? Seemed like a good thing to do. That's what I'd do if I was streaming. Way to not die yet? I think I'm terrible. I think I'm punting. <laughs> um. Doesn't seem right. Slida, thanks very much for the Twitch Prime. Uncle Mushu to you as well. Grabs! Thanks for three months. Uncle Boom will show to you as well. Ooh, 
Ooh. 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 <laughs> Ooh, a variety of noises. All right. Well, that dies. That's cool. Gain six health, get a relic. Oh, it's a dead branch. All right. I'm into this. I'm... I'm starting to feel excited. Uh, <laughs> Sword Boomerang seems cool. It's Gremlin Knob again. Maybe this fight will go better for you, Gremlin Knob. Wait, Gremlin Knob, where did your health go? They door breached me. Whoops. Fucking infantry, man. Fucking infantry. You can't just deal less than 21 there. <laughs> like, really? 21, though. Alright, that's great. On my way. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Earth, mate. <laughs> that's, that's my own fault. I have bring him on on my infantry, which gives them higher crit damage. I just shot it with somebody. I mean, obviously, Caitlyn and I make love to Jorb's mods anyway, so that's that's fine. I get it. I get it. It's sort of hot. Bell changed, yeah, a little bit a while back. Burn, hello? Are you okay? Burn? Yes, hello, would you like to like, come hang out with the rest of the hand maybe? You're good over there, all right. Oh, oh, here it is, it's arrived. Hello, sorry about that. Jersey, I'm back Jersey, though. Jersey, Jersey. Whoa, 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 stop playing the... <laughs> uh, what's going on? We're being attacked from both sides. There's a treasure chest. We just finished a wave. We've got longbows cooking. We have a smithy upgrade. All right, I think I vaguely understand what's going on here. We're just um, working on winning the game right now, right? Keep looking at cards. Even though we have all the cards that I would say we have to have in order to win the game, there are still cards that we could get that would assist a little bit, make things a little bit easier. Uh, we can't go any further this way, so we are pushed all the way out in both directions. We got our first upgrade, second upgrade. Upgrade reinforce so we can get these walls stronger. So the big thing here is actually having enough berserkers. Oh, that side was completely fine. I did not need help on that side, but this side needs help. Looks like we're still good. And when we go into Act 3, we actually stop fighting against enemies who are strong against ranged units. And so because of that, I'm just going to take a house here and get my population a little bit higher. Let's actually duplicate it and play it. Because of that, my longbows are going to take over now. I'm going to get both of the walls up to 1000 HP. That should keep them safe for a little while. Uh, not much reason to care about any of the buildings that make me money, which is four out of these eight cards. I already have defensive walls pushed all the way out. I could buy a defensive wall and upgrade one of my inner walls, but I'm not that sold on it. It doesn't seem very important. I only have six cards total, it looks like. Or wait, there are three here, so I have nine cards total. I draw seven cards per hand. Okay. 
so it's not completely free to buy a random card. I'm just gonna pass, I think. We have nine longbows on the side. We're being attacked by enemies on this side, though. This is gonna be the Act 2 boss. And it should be pretty straightforward for our garrison here, I think. And we're actually out of population. So we don't get to play any more military units right now. We're down to seven cards total. So we draw our entire hand every turn. And now I can just start reinforcing and repairing this wall. So even if the Act 2 boss takes down our melee units here, which may happen. Or not. Or not? Oh boy, those Berserkers are strong. Even if it had happened though, um, we would have just been able to reinforce and repair the wall nonstop, and our longbows would have peppered it down and killed it. So at this point, um, I think that Act 3, much like used to be the case for Slay the Spire, and is so a little bit now, but a little bit less so I would say with the addition of the heart, um, Act 3 is really the weakest part of the game at the moment. The late game balance breaks a lot. We have one combination of cards. There are many different combination of cards, um, which sort of trivialize late game. And yeah, we happen to put together one of the combinations and I'll leave it up to you and your playing of the game to find some of the other ones. There are quite a few combinations that you can put together that really make late game easy. Uh, but basically all I'm going to do is like keep my population going, keep looking at cards to make my population increase, play longbows, reinforce my walls, and win. And I... I'm just gonna sort of chill out and do that now, I guess. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna... go super crazy on explaining every tiny thing that happens. But certainly I will do all of this stuff and, you know, you're uh, very much invited to chill out and watch it happen. Actually, I'm gonna buy Visit and you can see how broken Visit is because we're doing something broken, but like the amount that Visit is broken sort of puts the thing that we're doing to shame. So let's take an upgrade Visit. You can watch what Visit does to a duck. Here's our monastery. So Visit, when we play it, um, it's like getting three quarters of a production cycle out of the building that we play it on. It does make it take longer for our leader ability to come up again, but the amount that that matters is not very high. Um, okay, I don't need Berserkers anymore at all. We're good with Longbow Rats. I'm going to start visiting my markets, I think. So that I can take more looks at cards. And eventually we'll get something that's better than a market to visit and things will go crazy. Mm. Fortress. I could duplicate the fortress over and over again in order to get to 199 population. Although it takes a lot of space, doesn't it? And I only have one military card in my deck. I don't think that's the best way to do it. Yeah, I don't think that's the best way to do it. Um, Warren? Warren would do it. Let's grab a Warren. Let's duplicate our Warren. And... Basically, just by itself, with Visit, we now have maximum possible population. So the Warren, every production cycle, gives us increased pop. And we're just going to visit it over and over again until we have all the pop we could ever need. Grab 
grab a card. Sure. Don't need those, though. Monastery Bazaar. No, 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 no. I can remove a mining at this point, I think. I don't think I need three of these. What's my gold at? 23,000. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably okay. Definitely expect that with a bit more time, this part of the game could be improved. I'm going to duplicate my visit so I can double visit the Warrens every hand. Alrighty. Now we're uh now we're just chilling. There let's see, what other things could we be visiting? We could get a barracks. A barracks every time the production cycle happens increases the stats of one of your military units, so we could visit a barracks over and over again and make our longbows. Ridiculously, ridiculously overpowered. We've got some fire enemies here, which are unfortunately going to spell doom for our melee units pretty quickly. No real reason to take another visit there. Like, if I wanted one, I'd just duplicate it from the tavern, honestly. Uh... There are some clicker elements to this game, like there are events which ask you to click on things. Not personally a fan. I feel like I have better things to do with my time. If they matter, I will uh, I will do them, but if they don't, I will ignore them, basically, is how I approach that. Here's my barracks. All right. We can visit that now. Let's go... Um, let's see. Visit the smithy, visit the tavern. Upgrade the barracks. Duplicate the barracks. Put one barracks on either side. So that it's easy to visit. Let's buy another Warren and do the same thing with the Warrens actually. So we can just very easily hit everything from either side of the base. Uh, visit... No, no, no. What am I duplicating? I don't have to duplicate any of this stuff, actually. Okay, never mind. Never mind. I'm actually going to stop paying attention to market procs and stuff now. So when I upgrade stuff at the barracks, it gets a permanent buff to its stats. And we can do that indefinitely. So these longbows can become very, 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 very strong. Uh, maybe remove... Nope. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> uh, we have an event which can punish us by not allowing us to expand anymore. We already have expanded to the edges of the map, so there's no reason not to take that. I guess, okay, there was a reason not to take that. It makes it so that the waves take longer to come, so we'll actually extend the end of the game here as we get more and more overpowered. I'm gonna stop playing longbows until I've upgraded them a bit more. You're gonna see the boss at the end of the game not live very long here, I imagine. I get them to like 50 damage, I think that'll be 
<laughs> um, pretty obscene. I'll just take them to 50. I'm not going to sit here forever. Is it increasing that by a different amount every time? Or is it all? It's always 412, is it? This goes to 38. Okay. I need to do three more of those. You can see that with the mining letting me draw my hand over and over again, and with the ability of the hand to do some sort of scaling thing, um, I can very quickly scale out of control for late game. And that's something that I think... You know, that time it only went up by three. So it's not always going up by the same amount. Oh. That'll be something that I think will be really interesting to see how the devs approach changing it, if they choose to change it. It might be that the devs decide that this is how they want the game to feel, in which case, you know, probably it's never going to have a ton of replayability for me, just because once you know how to do this, you can do it every time sort of thing actually a boss. Our melee units are dead. Fire is pretty efficient at killing melee units, but our longbows remain. Art upgrade, legendary card. Mm, we could take a public bath. If we wanted to have more time to scale, we could take that, but we don't need it here, so I'm just not going to. The Slay the Spire devs did an incredible job of clamping down on the really, really, really broken ways to make the end of the game irrelevant that used to exist and making sure that the end of the game was challenging enough to provide replayability. I think it's probably possible to pull that off in this game, but looking at what the game is right now, it feels like there are a lot of things that would need to be changed. The like mid game's really good though. Mid game, I often feel like I'm going to die. I often feel like I have to do something creative to survive. This mid game was just like spam berserkers. It was one of the easier mid games that I've played. There are definitely other situations where I've had to get way more creative than that. Mm, I will. <laughs> I will click on the remove a card button and then not actually remove a card. How about that? Not gonna bother visiting the merchant. Don't know what could possibly be offered to me that would matter. I think I mentioned this at the start of the video, but just in case I didn't. Another concern is that the card pool is shared between the characters. So even though there are four different characters who play very differently in the early game, because the early game is very heavily about how you're utilizing your hero power to get more value and then using value to survive mid-game. Um, unfortunately, the late game ends up often being exactly the same on all four of them, just because there are combinations of cards which are so strong together that it doesn't matter what your hero power is because your cards just do something way stronger than it ever could. That's the end of the Berserkers. They served us well though. Guards are actually still alive. You can't skip the reward, that's funny. I wanted to skip there, but there's actually no option to do it. I mean, there's no reason to, right? I, it's not like taking the gold is bad. It felt like a situation where there was no reason not to skip either. 
Got 34 longbows there, 18 longbows here. Let's get some more longbows on the right side. Uh, I've had a lot of fun with spamming visit to the barracks and like you can take one of the units that was in your starter deck and just make it absolutely gigantic and have it beat up the end game boss which is pretty fun. I've had some fun with spamming duplications on like public baths. Public baths is the building that I didn't take earlier that makes it take longer for the wave to show up. And so if you get enough of those, you can have a very long time between waves and you can scale buildings because you just have such a long time. Oh, those are dead already. Oh dear. Oh no. Oh no. Not like this. Uh, <laughs> it's a bad day. Bad day to be the bad guys. We're not going to take the 15 second between waves. Doesn't seem very necessary. You can play for score if you want. This game gives you score based on how many enemies you kill, how many cards you get, and how many buildings you construct. Which means that in order to high score you have to do some really weird things. Like I could theoretically be visiting my markets and buying cards every single time and my score would go up. I could visit the market and buy cards, go to the monastery, visit that, and remove the card. And every cycle that I did, my score would go up like 10 points or something. Maybe it's not 10 points, maybe it's 5 points. I'm not sure. Oh, we actually have maximum population now. So... Just play a couple more longbows, because why not? And then the end boss will come and we'll kill it. Another thing about how late game works is advises are set up to be these cool... Oh, is the reason that the attack was changing? Because I have... It's because I have a 25% um, extra attack advisor, isn't it? Well, I'm glad I worked that out. Some of you probably realized and were yelling at me from home. Yeah, so like I have this advisor and it's just not even remotely relevant because my cards are obscene. I don't think there are many things in Slay the Spire where it's like none of your relics matter because your cards are just so strong. Usually even if you have a deck with strong cards, you need your relics to make sure that you can draw them or whatever. But in this game, one thing that happens is there's no resets between fights. So one of the strengths of Slay the Spire is that like you need to put demon forms into your deck, for example, or cards like demon form, which scale for you over the course of a fight. But then you have to work out every single fight how you're going to find time to play that demon form and play it. And in this game, if I play like one barracks once, now it's there forever for the rest of the run. And the run takes a comparable amount of time to a Slay the Spire run, and has a comparable number of fights to a Slay the Spire run. But there's this problem where when I play the barracks that's like my demon form type card, I only have to play it once then I keep on getting value from it forever until the run's over. And that really hurts the game's um, replayability and the interest that it's possible to have in a run, I think, because once you get this barracks down and it starts scaling, it just becomes very apparent that you're going to win and you don't have to do anything to earn that anymore. Just the act of playing the barracks once and um, staying alive while you do it ends up being enough for the rest of the game pretty much sometimes. So that's the thing that seems like a big problem with uh, designing the game for having fun late games. Maybe this sort of gameplay is fun for late game for some people, and maybe for some players this just won't be a problem, but just talking about what I care about as a player, 
That certainly lessens the experience for me. All right, what have we got here? We got the spider boss. This boss is going to die. Like, really fast. Oh, no. <laughs> so, that boss actually has, like, abilities and stuff. Oh, I got to 99,000 gold as well. That's funny. Um, that boss does actually have abilities and stuff, which it can theoretically use. But, yeah, we killed it too fast. So that's that's Ratropolis. Um, this was a very clean, very OP win. There are a lot of mid games in particular, which are a lot closer and scrappier than that. And it's possible to have scrappy games where you come out ahead in the end. Um, yeah, the end game was very linear here for sure. But I think that's sort of par for the course, unfortunately. Um, I think that pretty much any Retropolis win that I showed you would have a very linear end game where you're just sort of spamming some sort of incremental advantage over and over again. I think it's pretty easy to like get to wave 27 without something like that, but I think it's very hard to bridge the gap between wave 27 and wave 30 without some very strong incremental advantage generating engine, which if you have it, it just sort of consumes the gameplay. So I would say that early game here was it was fun. It was made more simple by the two mining cards that we got really early, but we got some buildings deployed and got to build a standing army and we had like had the shield rats, but then we found the berserkers and it was like, okay, we need the berserkers for dealing damage to act two enemies. So we need to go for the berserkers here and get away from the shield rats. That's the sort of decision that I wouldn't have been able to make the first time I played the game. So maybe I would have lost if this was the first time I was playing the game because I wouldn't have recognized how I needed to warp my unit compositions around. And then for act three, like, if I didn't know that my melee units were going to have a lot of trouble surviving fire attacks, I wouldn't have known to prioritize longbow rats so much. And I think I was only offered longbow rats once or maybe twice, so if I didn't buy them when they were offered, maybe I would have lost there, but once you've learned that longbow rats are very strong for late game, then you know and you can do it. Yeah, I would definitely say that mid-game can be more interesting than it was in this run, but I think this was a pretty typical win for Ratropolis, um, maybe a little bit easier than some of them are. I found that I can win definitely more than half of my runs. I had like a six-win streak that died in a very tough mid-game earlier this week. I think that if somebody spent uh, a few more hundred hours than I have playing the game and really ironing out all of the math on redrawing and stuff, I've done a few spreadsheets, but not a ton. Um, I'm sure that you could get up to like 80 or 90%-ish win rate, but the game still is a little bit vicious in mid-game, and sometimes mid-game is going to be really demanding, and getting from 90% to 95% or 98% I think is a pretty impressive thing to do in this game uh, just because sometimes it's hard to get the cards that you need to survive um, as the waves get stronger and stronger through mid game and then also sometimes you have to get really creative and working out how you're going to put together a strong engine for late game sometimes it's not as easy as it was in this run where it was just like okay i make the walls strong i put longbow rats behind them Sometimes there's a lot more like thinking going on and matching different pieces because you don't just get given the exact easiest cards that you want at exactly the right times. So, fun game though. Even for a run where I was explaining a ton of stuff, this only took an hour and a half. And I would say that that's pretty in keeping with like a fairly long run would be an hour and a half. It's more normal for a win to take somewhere around an hour, so pretty comparable to Slay the Spire in game length, I would say. Uh, quite an enjoyable mechanical gameplay system where you're redrawing and playing cards. Just overall a really cute, fun game. I know I've been ragging on the end game a little bit. That's who I am. As a gamer, I want to be constantly being challenged to make new decisions and reevaluate things as I play the game or I get bored if I'm just doing a linear strategy and like if I could imagine teaching a robot to do my strategy in under an hour um I 
am probably not enjoying executing the strategy very much for me. But if you are interested in like, I don't know, watching a show and playing a game, I feel like Retropolis late game is a pretty good, <laughs> pretty good speed for watching a show while spamming some buttons off screen. All right. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. I don't get the opportunity to address YouTube only people that often. Um, but yeah, I hope you're hope you're having a great time. I do read all of the comments on YouTube. Got a super positive YouTube comment section, and I appreciate that. And I hope everybody's doing well and having an awesome. Apparently, it's November. Having an awesome November. Check out Retropolis if this looked interesting to you. This hasn't been sponsored or anything. I bought this game with my own money because it looked really like super up my alley, and then I thought the gameplay was good enough to be worth recording an explanation of what was going on and putting it on YouTube. So this isn't like an advertisement. This is just me genuinely saying, hey, if you enjoy Slay the Spire and you enjoy this sort of game, Retropolis is a really fresh take on it and could definitely be worth checking out for, uh, for a few hours. So hope you have an awesome rest of your day and I'll uh, hope to see you next time. Bye. Oh, we should watch the... We should watch the... It's funny, my friend Celerity got the highest score um, on the leaderboards, and the reason he got the highest score was that he fought against the turtle boss, who's the other boss. And I don't want to like spoil too much, but the turtle boss makes summons and has some sustain, and Celerity couldn't like deal enough damage to kill it, and so just kept on killing the summons, which made the enemies killed go up and up and up, and then by the time that he actually killed the turtle boss, he <laughs> had the global number one score. sort of funny and anyway see y'all next time